We can either stand here in the early 21st century and just respond or just react very proximally to the future, or we can jettison ourselves out and think, what do we want the future to look like and engineer backwards? There's a lot of fatalism in environmental writing and rhetoric these days. Uh, in fact, there was a recent book, Revenge of Gaia, how the Earth in a post-human construct would be down to a couple hundred mating pairs. I wrote Finding Higher Ground as a response, really, to that fatalism. Um, adaptation is the opportunity, the cultural and evolutionary opportunity for us to not find ourselves in a dystopic reality. It's actually the moment for us to grow something, to build something, societies that operate under a different set of principles, uh, ones that are adaptive and responsive to conditions and not closed to them. Um, and so the preparedness that is part of adaptation is our response to the knowledge that this phenomenon exists. It's real. We see it in our weather. We see it in our lives. We see our seasonal markers fall under uh, the weight of this change. And adaptation is a response that says, we're here to stay. We're a persistent entity of Earth's community. And we're going to build differently. We're going to live differently. We're going to live according to principles that are not degrading they are not polluting, and do not exacerbate climate change in this specific sense. That's what adaptation is. And to be prepared for it is a great relief. Uh, it's a great a restoration of self and agency versus fatalism, which is a complete downer. 150 years ago, when the hot water heater was first coming into um, American society, people thought it was effeminate to wash more than once or twice a month. Um, people thought it was, it was a fire hazard. How, how would you contain the coals in your hot water heater? Um, and nobody had them. There was no assumption of hot water. Now we walk into our homes and it's just completely granted that hot water is brewing in the basement, right? Similarly, in 20 years time, maybe even maybe 30 years time, we will walk into homes. It's my vision of the future. And there in the basement will be a set of batteries, perhaps a hydrogen fuel cell. And on the roof will be solar photovoltaic panels, thin cell you know, photovoltaics that are part of the shingles on the southern part of the wall, or perhaps on the carport um, above where the car is plugged in. And that will be creating the electricity and the power for the household.